Chapter 17 Dilly Dallying Winston edged his way tentatively down the tunnel. He was feeling nervous again. Prue had been an unlikely friend, but her company and help had been just what Winston had needed. Now he was all alone again and heading into the unknown world of the department store. He thought about the security man from earlier and was worried that there might be others in the shop. Would they notice him? What would they do if they had caught him? And would Father Christmas even still be in the store? The smells from the shop were getting stronger and stronger and it wasn't long before a dim light illuminated the way in front of him. After turning the corner, he came to another grill. Luckily, this one was much more generous than the one in the alleyway. After rolling up the envelope and posting it through the grill, Winston set about squeezing himself through. It wasn't easy, but after a few minutes of sucking in his tummy and folding his ears and huffing and wiggling, he popped out of the tunnel like a cork from a bottle of champagne and went tumbling, tail over ears, across the floor. He picked himself up and scurried back to collect his precious letter. It was only after he had stopped and listened for any human footsteps and not heard any approaching that he allowed himself to breathe properly and look around. He was in a vast room. Thick, fluffy carpet stretched out as far as he could see. Around him on all sides were well-polished counters and, if Winston went on tiptoes and really stretched his nose high, he could just about see what was displayed on top of them in their shiny glass fronts. There were hats of all colours and designs, gloves of all lengths and fabrics, silky scarves and smart handbags all lined up in rows. As Winston padded along, he gazed at it all in awe. The building itself was beautiful, with carved wooden columns holding up the high vaulted ceiling. Although the main lights were off, hundreds of pretty Christmas garlands of holly with baubles, crackers and tiny parcels nestled amongst them were strung along every surface, their fairy lights twinkling and sparkling, making the whole place look like a glittering, magical grotto. The smells Winston had sniffed from outside were almost overwhelming now that he was inside the building. They tumbled over and around each other in his nose and it made him feel a little bit dizzy. He had to concentrate very hard to remember that Father Christmas was somewhere in this building. Winston didn't have time to go wandering about, dilly-dallying. Hitching the letter securely under his arm, Winston marched off determinedly. He had absolutely no idea where he was meant to be going, but he felt that if he just kept walking, sooner or later he would find something that would tell him where he was and where he might find Father Christmas. And he was sort of right. After several minutes of walking between display cabinets and mannequins, the room opened up into a huge atrium. Winston craned his neck and looked up and around him. Enormous richly carved banisters and thickly carpeted staircases wound their way up and around the space, leading the customers to the treasures that were on sale in the other five floors. At the top, the building was finished off by a great glass dome from which hung a gigantic crystal chandelier. A large Christmas tree lit up and decorated with ribbons and jewels stood in the middle of the room. Winston spun around, taking it all in. Five floors, he thought, and he felt his ears droop. How would he be able to search for Father Christmas quickly across five floors? Just the thought of the climbing of the endless staircase on his tiny little paws made Winston feel exhausted before he even started. He took a deep breath. <sighs> Come on now, Winston, he told himself. We're almost there. Forcing his ears to stop drooping, Winston decided that the best plan would be to search each floor in turn until he found Father Christmas. He set off again, but he hadn't got very far when the smell of delicious food from somewhere came, from, came from somewhere nearby. He had smelt some food from outside in the alleyway, but the scent was now so strong that it had stopped him completely in his tracks. His little pink nose twitched. He could smell cookies and candy canes, pies and cheeses, fresh bread and party food all swirling around him. His stomach growled loudly like a lion. Winston's feet suddenly turned from the direction he'd been travelling in and started marching in the opposite direction 
towards the food. But the letter, cried Winston. It was no use protesting. His nose, tummy and feet were now in charge and nothing was going to stop them from finding out where all this was coming from. He found himself running back across the gentleman's outfitter's department, past shiny leather brogues and tweed jackets and displays of silk ties of every colour fanned out from behind a model peacock. He whizzed by cashmere scarves, beautiful coats and silk pyjamas. He swerved round a tower of hat boxes and through an archway before coming to a sudden halt. Winston blinked in wonder. He couldn't believe what he was seeing in front of him. <laughs>